So this is just in time for Halloween. Okay, so scary birds of the world. Um, so a couple of photos were just up there. I think Dennis is getting them back up on the screen. Um, but uh, it's a common grackle on the left uh, when it comes up, which is not normally the very scariest bird uh, in the world. Um, Here's the common grackle, but that particular shot taken by Steve Zayner, who's in the audience helping with the camera, uh, looks pretty scary and it's eating something sort of dead, uh, it looks like, uh, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and here's another Steve Zayner photo on the right, um, a Joko Toko ant pitta, which is I'm sure from somewhere in the, yeah, okay, Ecuador, thank you. So I don't know how scary that is, but it sure is ugly, isn't it? Uh, eat it well, at least its meal is ugly. Um, I guess it's worms of some sort, some sort of annelid. I'm not sure, but it's pretty ugly So and gross. So maybe, uh, maybe things are not going to be always scary. They might be a little gross. Hopefully uh, that's okay. So um, I'm Pete Fenner. Um, been with Peoria Audubon for, for a couple decades, I think. But uh, thank you all for coming out. And um, I think we have a number of people on, on our Zoom as well. All right, Dennis, you're gonna have to uh, advance for me. Or did I do that? Okay, well, birds really aren't scary, right? They're not scary. Um, and here's, here's a few photos of my own that I thought I'd put in there. They don't look too scary. We've got a common yellow throat down here on the left. We've got a bluebird eating a mealworm here. We've got an American goldfinch and a Baltimore Oriole. They're, they're not scary, right? Not scary. Well, some birds are. Um, and, and some people are really scared of birds. Um, and I'm old enough to remember, uh, the uh, Hitchcock movie, The Birds, which was, I don't know, was it sixties or seventies? Uh, I don't know, but, um, yeah, it, it was, uh, playing off the fear that some people have of, of birds, which, uh, is probably not, uh, entirely well-founded, but. Uh, go back. Some people are really scared of birds. So here's a little raven coming at us. Okay, uh, this, isn't this a wonderful picture? This is uh, Steve Zayner's photo uh, that I use as a background here. Uh, but you can be assured that there are birds around you uh, this Halloween. There will be birds around us all the time. <laughs> so Halloween is no different. Um, and most birds are cute. Most birds are not to be feared, um, but some are fierce and some are scary and some are deadly. And we're going to talk about those uh, today so that uh, we get all of you ready for Halloween. I'm going to I'm going to take like a top 10 kind of format uh, back from the, from the David Letterman era, uh, era if you remember. So uh, top, top 10, number 10, scariest bird, vultures. Uh, I'm giving lots of uh, photos of Steve Zayner who has wonderful camera equipment and a wonderful eye for, for uh, birds. So he's got a couple of pictures here of vultures. We've got a turkey vulture on the left and a black vulture on the right. Um, uh, two, two vultures that can be seen in Illinois, although black vulture is is uh, not very common here. It, it, Southern Illinois, it's much more common. So it, it is this bird is associated with death. Um, it eats dead flesh, basically. Uh, it eats car carrion. It's a scavenger. It eats rotting meat often, dead and rotting meat. Okay, this is the gross part. Um, and, and some of the things it likes to eat are are toxic to other animals. Um, if you notice the head 
on vultures is bare skin. There, is, there are no feathers on the head of vultures. That's because it sticks its head down into uh, dead, rotting flesh. And uh, uh, it's evolved to not have feathers there because uh, they, they would, it would eat off the feathers. Um, so it, um, it also prevents the feathers from matting when they reach their head inside of carcasses. So anyway, uh, many people look at vultures overhead and think that it's a, a bad omen. Um, I'm not sure that that's true, uh, but uh, it could mean that there's some dead rotting meat around, or it could just mean that they like to float around in the sky, which they do. So this is my uh, photo of a, of a black vulture. There we go. Um, and it came up with a new word that I didn't know before, urohydrosis. So this is something that vultures do. And this is uh, urinating or defecating on themselves, uh, specifically on their feet, uh, that helps kill bacteria and parasites. Uh, so um, there's your word for the day, uh, urohydrosis. Pretty gross, isn't it? Uh, this, again, I, I'm going back to the gross theme here. Vultures have much stronger stomach acid, much more corrosive than other, than other birds. And I mentioned there are two North American species, the black and the turkey vulture, and some other names you might um, encounter that are in the vulture family, a condor, a buzzard, a griffin. Okay, number nine, the undertaker bird, uh, or the nightmare bird. <laughs> so uh, the marabou stork. Um, it is uh, named that uh, undertaker bird because of the dark cloak, the dark, um, I guess you can see it right here, the, the dark feathers on its back. So uh, it's a large bird. It also eats carrion, steals, bird, steals food from other, um, uh, killed by other animals. And it does scavenge around uh, waste dumps and, um, uh, and around humans. Uh, you're not going to see this bird around here. It's an African bird, uh, eastern and southern Africa. Okay, pretty ugly too. So it's got this scabby pink face. Uh, it can be a 20 pound bird, which for a bird is a pretty heavy bird, uh, but is pretty tall, about five feet tall and a 12 foot wingspan. So very large bill. Uh, as I'm saying here in the slide, a huge macabre looking stork. Uh, this is not the kind of stork you want to deliver your, your baby. Um, definitely not. Uh, so massive dagger-like bill and a naked pink head and neck that just it looks like it's had a real awful sunburn. So um, uh, that's what it looks like. Marabou stork. Number eight, scary bird, uh, vampire ground finch. This, again, you're not going to see this bird around here. This uh, bird lives in the Galapagos Islands. Uh, it's got a very, very sharp beak. For, it's a finch, too. It's not a very big bird, uh, but it will peck the skin of other birds and feed on the blood, um, primarily seabirds and, and primarily boobies. So, blue footed booby and and next a booby. So um, uh, pretty gross, pretty gross, but um, pretty scary. You know, look at the look at this thing. Number seven, shrikes. Anybody here seen a shrike? They are around here. Uh, they're not terribly common, but a northern shrike will be around here in the winter. Uh, loggerhead will can sometimes show up. Uh, but northern is more common in the winter. So they're called butcher birds uh, often, and it's the only songbird that I know of anyway that's a predatory songbird. So uh, look, at the, look, at the, um, look at the talons, whoops, on, on this bird. There really aren't any, hardly. It's a perching bird. So um, it's a songbird, but it will pick up 
prey and impale that the prey on whatever it can impale it upon. So usually thorns, uh, tree thorns in this case, or uh, barbed wire or other sticks. So it is strong enough to carry prey with its beak, I think, not with its, not with its feet or talons, and then imp impale it up on, on something and just that, and then it will feed on it. So uh, that is how uh, it eats. Pretty, pretty incredible, but that is what it does. There are two species in North America, as I said, the um, Northern Shrike and Loggerhead Shrike. And uh, here's a great picture from uh, Steve Zayner of a Northern Shrike. They're really tough to tell apart, quite honestly. Um, and after, after, um, after we're done here, I can, I can help you with that if you, if you want help in telling them apart. They're pretty uh, uncommon to see, but uh, it's pretty cool that, um, that we have good pictures. And uh, here's a uh, loggerhead strike. Generally, loggerhead strikes are more southern uh, and western, but um, uh, very, so if you're in Florida, for instance, or Texas or wherever, you're likely to see lots of loggerhead strikes. See them on the uh, telephone wires even. Okay, the number six scary bird, uh, a shoebill. Uh, some people call this a shoebill stork, uh, but the correct name is a shoebill. Massive beak looks like a wooden shoe clog, really. Again, another tall bird, about five, four to five feet tall, a large wingspan, eight foot wingspan, and it uses its ma massive beak to you know, basically destroy its prey. And, you know, it can easily kill and gobble uh, its prey with this massive beak. Believe it or not, it's evolutionarily related to a T-Rex, the, the theropod uh, line, which is, uh, you may remember, Velociraptor, right, uh, from Jurassic Park. So uh, it's, a, it's an, also an African bird, like a Uganda-type Uganda type area. So uh, it, it will eat lungfish. Really, that's its favorite food or lungfish. I think that's what it's got right here. And it will, you know, just beat it to death and often decapitates it. Uh, and will also eat uh, small crocodiles. So large bird, um, uh, pretty, pretty uh, cool looking, pretty scary. Here's some more pictures of a, of a shoe bill. <laughs> um, yeah, five feet tall, it's just pretty much looking me in the eye. You can see the relationship with the T-Rex. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can, indeed. Okay, um, the great potu. Has anybody ever heard of this bird before? This is a, a bird in the tropics, so Central and South America from, say, Guatemala down to uh, Bolivia, uh, Brazil. Uh, a large bird, about uh, two feet long with a three-foot wingspan. Uh, it's a nocturnal bird. Mostly eats insects, but it does eat, eat uh, uh, some birds and, and bats. Uh, and it's got these really big kind of uh, weird looking eyes that, um, like a what? A frog mouth. Yeah, indeed it does. So, um, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty frightening bird. If you were to see it, uh, again, it's in the tropics. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, um, have you, Kind of put yourself into the the habitat of this bird. Like you're in the dark, you're in a tent, and you're in the tropics. And this is what you're gonna this is what you're gonna hear. Now, would that freak you out if you were in a 
tent in the tropics and you heard that? Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty, uh, pretty scary, right? That is its song, believe it or not. That is its singing. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna let you hear its call. That's not, that's not much better, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's the great potu. Pretty cool, pretty scary. Okay, the uh, number four scariest bird, the common raven. So lots of mythology. I'm sure most of you have heard about the raven, and uh, it's often considered a bad omen if there's a, a raven near you. Uh, another new word for the next cocktail party uh, that, you're, that you attend, a, a psychopomp, and that is a guide uh, up for the deceased, and it mediates, um, you know, the animal between life and death. So uh, there's another new interesting word for you for tonight. But um, you have all heard of the Ed Edgar Allan Poe poem, "The Raven." Uh, if you have, uh, if you have not read it in a while, I'm not going to read it tonight. But if you've not read it in a while, that is a great thing to do on Halloween is to, is to read that poem, Quoth the Raven Nevermore. Uh, anyway, it's a, it's a very cool poem. I would highly recommend you do that and very famous. So um, let's listen to the raven. Okay, that's a juvenile raven. Uh, so uh, here's, a, here's an adult. <coughs> Sounds a lot like a crow, but a very hoarse crow. Okay, so there's, there's a raven. Um, generally don't find them uh, around our area, uh, but go north and uh, that's, that's where you might find them. So um, more photos from Steve. They, these are ravens, right, Steve? <laughs> right, 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 right. So here's uh, uh, more photos from Steve Zayner. Uh, this, is, this is a common raven chasing a red-tailed hawk. Um, so uh, they're, not, they're not afraid of, uh, of a red-tailed hawk and its talons. <laughs> okay, the number three scary bird, great horned owl. This is a bird that is... Um, pretty common in our area right here. And uh, you may have seen them, you may have heard them. We'll, we'll, play, uh, we'll play some, some uh, uh, of its uh, calls. So this is an apex predator. This is a very, very, very tough bird. Uh, this bird will kill other uh, prey, birds of prey. Uh, it will kill osprey. Um, Several years ago, we had a, uh, here in Peoria Audubon, we had a, um, a wildlife refuge manager here from Chautauqua. And he had a, he told a story of a, um, a platform and uh, osprey were breeding on the platform. And a great horned owl came in, killed the mother and uh, flew off with one of the young. Um, and not long ago, there was a picture uh, that I saw of a, of a great horned owl that had killed a barred owl. Uh, so a great horned owl is a very, very tough bird, uh, one that other birds don't mess with. And you'll often hear other, if, if, a, if a great horned owl is roosting in a tree, uh, you will hear other birds uh, squawking at it. Uh, they don't want it around. 
Uh, they're trying to chase it away. Years ago, I worked at a uh, zoo and uh, there was a great horned owl uh, in one of the exhibits. And uh, I was in college, so I was a zookeeper and I had to clean cages and things. So I was not allowed uh, in the great horned owl cage. Um, and, you know, we could move other birds. We could move other animals, no problem. We had great big leather gloves. Uh, we could move, uh, you know, uh, mammals with big teeth. There was no problem but not the great horned owl. We were not allowed to uh, move the great horned owl uh, because its talons are so strong. Um, and even though the, the, the leather glove that, that we were provided <laughs> to protect our, our arms um, would have stopped its talons, its, its grip was so strong it would break, break my arm. So it is an incredibly strong uh, bird and a, a, like, as I said, an apex predator um, that, um, that is to be feared. Yes. These scars on my arm are pretty leather gloves. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't. And it took people private and pop with me. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know if everybody heard that online, but. Uh, we have an audience member who was <laughs> gripped by a great horned owl uh, through leather uh, sleeves, basically, and uh, has the scars to prove it. And it took, it took somebody else to help you get it off your arm. Yeah. Still, you don't hold still with the great horn and they got you. Any movement, they don't think that you're dead and that your owl continues to date. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I don't know, again, if, uh, if you could see that, if you could hear that, but uh, the owl just continues to dig in until they know you're dead. And it, <laughs> so it took somebody else to help you, help you get that owl off. Uh, and we have a rehab, an owl, a bird rehabber in the audience. So thank you for that. Appreciate it. So uh, I was going to play the great horned owl um, call notes. You've probably heard them in your neighborhood. So it actually is not a very loud call. Uh, the great potu is a lot scarier call than that one. But um, there is a begging call of a great horn that we'll listen to. That's a little scarier. Okay, great horned owl. Uh, some other wonderful pictures. Thank you, Steve, for providing these uh, wonderful photos of great, great horned owl. Uh, it is a treat to see them uh, in the daytime. Uh, don't often get to see them in the daytime because uh, they, they will hide, as I mentioned, because other birds just don't want them around and will, he'll be chased away. Okay, uh, the number two scariest bird, a cassowary. Uh, so there's a couple, three different species of cassowary, uh, and they're not from around here. They're from northern part of Australia and Papua New Guinea, but uh, they are to be feared. They can run about 30 miles an hour, about five feet tall, and can be as much as 150 pounds. They can jump seven feet in the air, a seven-foot vertical leap. And uh, you may be able to see the helmet up here on the top right-hand corner picture called a cask. Um, so it has this helmet <laughs> that is a very bony protrusion from it. Uh, it's almost like a horn, I suppose, that I suppose it could stab you with. But uh, it has something else uh, to, to defend itself with, and that is the scariest part. The scariest part is the claw. So look at these claws. You know, I mentioned the Velociraptor uh, earlier. This is the modern day uh, real life <laughs> Velociraptor. Look at these. You, if you have seen the movie Jurassic Park with the, 
the Velociraptor tapping its its claw on the on the tile floor while the, those two kids are are hiding. I mean, look at look at this bird's claw, claws. Oops. I mean, this is about a five or six inch claw. Um, it, you know, one claw is long and the other ones are shorter, but they are all, all very uh, uh, fearsome. And uh, a few years ago, there was a man in Florida that, that kept a cassowary uh, as a pet, had the license apparently for it. And uh, the cassowary decided it wanted to kill the man, and it did. So uh, it kicks, it jumps, it stabs, it, it stomps, uh, and killed the man. So uh, if you are, <laughs> uh, I would highly recommend against having a cassowary as a pet. So uh, definitely a bird to be feared. Very large, flightless. Uh, but it uh, doesn't matter. It, it can defend itself. Okay, the number one scariest bird. Uh, I don't think we'll turn off the lights, but, uh, but uh, you, may, you may want to, to if you really want to be scared. Yep, close your eyes. And uh, we're going to play the uh, sound of this bird before before I tell you what it is. Okay, anybody know what this bird is? It is not a screech owl. It is a barn owl, very good, very good. Yes, uh, <laughs> it could be a three-year-old at bedtime, yes. Yeah, uh, a bone-chilling rising shriek, so there you have it. This, uh, I think, is the scariest sound of any bird. Yep, and uh, here's a couple pictures of a, bar of a barn owl. Uh, it looks pretty scary too, at least these pictures do, yeah. Uh, and then one gobbling up a mouse here. Actually, this is not a very big bird. It's, it's about a three, three foot wingspan, but its flight is silent and uh, it has this ghostly white plumage. So, um, it, it sort of, you know, scares its prey into not knowing what to do, and it uh, freezes, and it often will catch prey that way. Uh, so it frightens and immobilizes prey that way. Uh, and you can see how white its feathers are in these, in these photos. I believe it also has fantastic hearing, um, silent flight. Uh, they have actually... Uh, released a, a uh, mouse in a barn that had absolutely no light in it whatsoever, and it can find and catch and kill the mouse uh, just by its hearing. So uh, it's also a fearsome predator, uh, but it definitely has the scariest sound, I think, of any, of any bird. So um, that is uh, all. There's your top 10 scariest birds. Uh, I, <laughs> I thank you for attending. Um, yeah. I, uh, I do want to say a couple more things. So we do have a Facebook page. We have a, we have a page and we have a Facebook group. So please feel free to find us there. We have a website. We have a YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, Dennis and Steve have, have uh, figured out how to post videos to uh, to our YouTube channel. So this will be available on YouTube at some point uh, here in the next few days. And also please consider becoming a member and a year-end donation. I have to say that because I am the treasurer. So I have to say that. Um, and matching donations are, are 
really important for us. And there are a couple of uh, employers in our area, uh, Caterpillar and State Farm, that match donations. So uh, those are great for us. So, okay, the, the, for, for folks online, the comment in the audience is uh, they know people, Susie knows people who are terrified of birds. Terrified of birds. Yep, the question was, uh, do turkey vulture, do vultures, uh, can they smell? And the answer is yes, they can, they can, uh, they can smell. Barn owl, did you say? Okay. For Illinois, yeah. Uh, but a barn owl is um, basically, I think, circumpolar. I think it is all around the world. Um, I think that's the correct biological term, circumpolar. I'm sorry? Yes, it's, a very, it's very difficult to find in Illinois. Uh, Southern Illinois, there are more uh, barn owls, but it is an endangered, Illinois endangered, Illinois threatened species, I think is what it is. Uh, how to learn bird sounds and bird songs. Uh, there's a great resource out there called um, Merlin. And that's, I think, uh, the, pre the, the predominant um, recommendation that I would provide is use Merlin. It's an, it's an app that not only will give you uh, the, the songs, but the calls of the birds, plus it will also give you range, um, and it will also listen to the birds that are around you and give you hints as to what might be there. Uh, it basically will identify the bird by sound. So um, that's my, probably my highest recommendation, but there's a number of others, Steve, that, um, uh, that are out there, and you mentioned a few of them. Uh, all about birds, the website, all about birds, I think will, um, uh, has a number of, uh, in fact, I think they, um, uh, I think Merlin is populated essentially by the, by the website, all about birds. And there's a number of others. Peterson has, uh, um, uh, um, Peterson is one, uh, what was the one you mentioned, Steve? Sibley, the Sibley guide, uh, that's an app though. Um, it's a wonderful printed guide, but obviously not, it doesn't have sounds, but uh, their app, their app does. Um, and I think for the same price as the book. Um, so there's lots of, lots of options for, for bird song. The, uh, Barn Owl Distress Call, I, I have, I took that from a CD from years ago. So you're probably not going to get that on online because it was a distress call. So thanks, Steve. Appreciate that. Okay. Well, that's it. Thank you all for coming. Happy Halloween. Trick or treat. <laughs>